Hello, thank you for joining me um, for my talk, Preparing for Folding. This is actually a part two, and the first video, Factors to Consider When Breeding a Foal, is also available, and might make more sense to watch that one first. Anyway, here we go. So, uh, first things first, it's really important to get the basics right. Make sure that your routine and preventative health care is in good order before even considering adding that stress of carrying a foal to your mare. So um, good farriery, uh, important that her feet are in good condition. Carrying a foal is gonna put a lot of extra strain on the body, particularly the hoof, and it's essential that she has regular um, foot care. This is prior to being put in foal and also once in foal. Good dentistry, at least once yearly examinations. Some horses may require every six months. Um, you know, any infection in the oral cavity can be, you know, spread throughout the body. So um, you need to make sure dentistry is all in order. Uh, parasite control, that's very important. And that's important when she's in foal because some of the parasites that a mare carries can actually travel through the milk and infect the foal very early on in its life. So um, you have to be really on top of the parasite control. And then vaccinations, once your mare is in foal, ideally she would have a booster against influenza and tetanus within six weeks of the expecting foaling date. And this is so that she can make some antibodies um, and these antibodies can be in the colostrum and be passed on to the foal to help give the foal immunity right from the beginning of its life. And also um, your mare should be vaccinated against equine herpes virus 1 and 4 at 5, 7 and 9 months gestation. And then you might want to consider vaccinating your mare against rotavirus, um, particularly uh, that's something we do on the large studs. Uh, where rotavirus is more of a problem and if you are thinking that you're going to vaccinate with against rotavirus that's at eight nine and ten months of pregnancy so nutrition lots of people ask me about nutrition in their pregnant mares basically um, I try and split it into three components early pregnancy um, you know the first seven months generally the requirement is similar to maintenance so you know good quality pasture, forage and a stud balancer should be adequate but then in late pregnancy the foal is growing very rapidly and there is an increased calorie need. Can't really give a blanket recommendation because it really depends on your breed of horse and their body condition score but it's um, usually you will need to step up the, the um, you know what you're offering feed wise in those late last few months. And then again, that will probably need to continue into lactation because of the increased calorie need on the body. So um, that will be the at least the first three months of raising her foal. After that, um, the requirements do start to decrease. But, um, you know, you're going to need to be feeding something specific to help with that lactation. So there's lots of good commercial um, feeds on the market and the reps of the different feed companies are very helpful um, getting some specific advice for your mare. So um, really the summary is to focus on pasture and forage and then top up with a stud balancer or specific stud feed depending on your mare's weight and condition. So gestation length, it's really variable in horses. Um, I give my clients uh, a range that I do based on um, the horse website's uh, gestation calculator and that's quite helpful just so you you know have some guidelines but basically anything between 320 to 360 days is normal average is 345 1% of mares can go over a year um, if your foal is born before 320 days is considered premature now, it's possible that your foal would be born at full term, but still display some clinical signs consistent with being premature. If if that's the case, they're classed as immature or dismature rather than premature. So it's just a little bit of a quirk of the terminology, but it is important. So when is your mare going to foal? Most mares will foal at night, uh, probably right in the middle of the night. And there's a bit of a 
an old saying that goes, the foal determines the day, the mare determines the hour. So if you keep disturbing her, she can hold on and, um, you know, she she won't start um, giving birth till she's or falling <laughs> till she feels like she's safe and undisturbed. So um, udder development is usually three to six weeks before foaling. If you're noticing that udder is developing over two months before, that can be a bit of a worrying sign and could indicate a condition called placentitis, which is an infection of the placenta. Um, so definitely get in touch for some uh, for a veterinary examination if your mare is doing that. And then um, when when we're getting close to when you know when we're expecting the falling date to be, I find the two most reliable factors are waxing up and softening of the ligaments around the tail head and sort of elongation of the vulva. So when you start to see that, you know that it's going to be, you know, within 24, 48 hours, um, in my experience. Just waiting for my slide to <laughs> move on. There we go. Okay, clinical signs of immaturity. So this is what we discussed. Your, your foal is, um, you know, might have been born at full term, but is displaying signs consistent with being premature. So these might be weaker, smaller size. They might have silky hair and their hooves don't quite dry out. Domed forehead and soft lips, floppy ears, red tongue or red membranes can indicate that there's been some oxygen deprivation during the birth. So that's you know definitely worth telling your vet about you know quite serious so it's a it's a brick red it's very bright not like a normal pink um hyper extension of the fetlock joints uh reduced tolerance to feeds uh reduced body temperature and then um this is something you might not be able to see just from looking externally but the small bones in the knees and the hocks aren't quite formed which can lead to a sickle confirmation um, and requires x-rays to to um, grade severity and give a prognosis and respiratory distress those are all signs of a fall that's immature dismature so monitoring um you want to you know everyone's always you know wants does not want to miss it so um you can use uh, a web camera um hooked up in the stable which and then keep checking that um, so some nice images we got from um, a mare falling last year, which is uh, good to look back over. And also then you've got it time stamped, so you know what time the foal arrived. You can also get the belts that measure um, heart rate or detect sweating. And you can also get a transmitter that um, you stitch either side of the vulva and it's connected by a magnet. And then when that gets broken apart, it sends... Um, a radio signal to an alarm and you get an alert that way so those are the sort of three key things because um, it can be quite a lot of sleepless sleepless nights when you're waiting for your mare to fall okay so the stages of labor it's uh, one two three same as with people um, stage one is the initial uterine contractions your mare is going to be uh, lying down, getting up, might be a bit sweaty, looks generally uncomfortable, might be walking the paddock aimlessly. Um, this stage is a variable length in time, can be five minutes to three hours. And what's happening is the foal is turning in, from lying on its back to a position where its backbone is next to the mare's backbone and its head is facing the tail, so like in the picture. So it's an important stage, the foal is getting into that perfect position and the cervix is beginning to dilate. This stage ends when the membranes rupture, which is the water's breaking, and then it goes on to very exciting stage two, which is when the foal is delivered. And this is characterized by very strong abdominal contractions. The foal's feet appear at the vulva, uh, one foot and then the other, um, with the head between the knees, so that diving position. Ideally, the mares are lying down, um, but some might not, some might be standing, but um, it should be less than 20 minutes. So um, you want to start a timer for that. If you're there for the whole thing, that, that can be quite helpful. 
Stage three is expulsion of the placenta. And some mares pass that straight after passing the foal, you know, within 10 minutes. But um, it can take, you know, up to three hours. If it's still retained after three to six hours, call the vet. You need to be um, sooner to call the vet in a draft breed because they're very susceptible to retain placenta. So that's very important in those breeds. We will talk about the placenta some more in a bit. Okay, so... Um, I wanted to just talk about a few emergency situations where you want to call your vet straight away. Just to caveat this, you know, most mares will fall completely fine on their own, unassisted, but there are a few situations when they are going to need additional help and those situations are an emergency. So if you see a bright red bag at the vulva, like in this picture, that's an emergency because it the placenta has prematurely come away and it's not ruptured and basically this means that the foal is not getting its oxygen supply because the placenta has already detached and so the foal you need to break that bag and get the foal out as soon as possible another situation where you need to call your vet is if your mare has been in that stage one of restlessness for longer than three hours or if they're in the stage two, so they've got the strong abdominal contractions and it's been going on longer than 15 minutes with no, you know, obvious progression, you know, because that whole stage two should only take 20 minutes maximum. Um, if you're getting the white bag, but you're getting no body parts, active straining and no progress or an absence of straining, or if you only see one, one hoof at the vulva. So, it's normal to see one hoof and then the other come forward, but yeah, it's normal for one hoof to be in front of the other, but they both should be there. Or if the hooves are upside down, or if the hooves are above the nose, um, or if you've got a head and no hooves, or if you've got a tail. So all those situations you need to call the vet. So what happens next? You've got your lovely foal delivered nice and safely, hopefully. Um, most mares will need to lie down, you know, for at least five to ten minutes because they'll be exhausted from the abdominal straining. The foal, however, should be sitting up, you know, breathing, sitting up on its chest within two minutes of birth. And basically, one, two, three, stand within an hour, nurse within two hours, and the mare's placenta passed within three hours. So that's a general guide, and we're very happy when all those things happen at the right time. You will need to monitor both the mare and foal closely for the first 24 to 48 hours after birth. It's really important that that foal is nursing and displaying normal behaviour in that time and that the mare is recovering well. So it's really crucial. Any Anything that's not quite right, that um, it receives early treatment and identification. So the placenta, this is really vital and um, it's really important that it gets inspected properly. So once your mare's passed it, you should put it in a bucket and um, make sure your vet can examine it when they come and look at the mare. You know, examine it yourself as well, but um, your vet will want to have a look. So what I like to do is lie, lie the placenta in an F shape and examine that there are no tears or um, bits missing that might still be inside the mare. So the most common area to be retained is the tip of the non-pregnant horn. So you want to um, turn it both ways inside out and check that that is, you know, all there. And you also want to see um, the surface of that bright red um, Alantocorion. So that bright red surface is what's attached to the mare's uterus. and if there's any patches there where there aren't any blood vessels or there's any um, smelly uh, necrotic looking areas that could be a sign of infection and it might mean that the foal is carrying some infection so um, you know that picture in the presentation is a nice bright um, you know it's evenly textured placenta and a healthy placenta but um, it needs to be inspected closely to make sure that's the case and um, if there's anything strange about it your vet might want to weigh it because a very heavy placenta can be uh, indicate some problems um, you know they might want to look at the umbilical cord 
everything really you can get a lot of information so lay it out in those shapes check it's all there and keep it for your bet so the newborn fold check really important um, really important what we're going to want to do is measure the IgG we're probably going to give the fold a tetanus antitoxoid which will provide immediate cover against tetanus um, if the foal has not passed all their meconium, it might be time to give them a fleet enema, um, which, which really helps get things moving. And then um, dipping the navel again, although you know, you've probably done that yourself as well. And it's an opportunity to do a really thorough clinical examination. Um, observe the behaviour and the nursing and just check all the physical parameters. Um, in the picture, that's a, a foal with a sow mouth, which um, was impacting the foal's nursing ability. So, um, you know, there's lots of potential things that can be going on, and it's really important that we have a thorough check of everybody, um, mare and foal, at, you know, between 12 and 24 hours old. So the IgG, immunoglobin, is really important because foals are born without an immune system they're immunologically naive and they rely on the immunoglobins that they're going to get from mum's colostrum so that means that the mare's colostrum has to be good quality in the first place and that the foal has to consume enough within that vital first few hours so what you can do is do a visual inspection of the colostrum just you know squeeze a little bit out and see you know, is it very thick and, and yellow? And what you can also do is use a refractometer to put a little drop on there and get a percentage reading. It should be between 20 and 30% to indicate, indicate good quality. Um, now, the IgG is, um, the, it can be done in a variety of ways, but the most accurate is a blood sample sent to the lab. And you get a, a value less than 200 is a failure of transfer. 400 to 800 is partial failure and over 800 is considered normal. So that would be that the foal has nursed and consumed a good amount of colostrum of a good enough quality to ensure a good transfer of immunity. Now, if you get a result which is less than optimal, basically, if the foal is less than 24 hours old, it means they're um, stomach is still able or intestines are still able to absorb colostrum if they're over 24 hours old they cannot absorb that colostrum anymore because their gut has closed so within 24 hours one option could be to stomach tube the foal with high quality colostrum that's been collected from another mare and stored in the freezer if there is no colostrum available or the foal is over 24 hours old the only option left to raise the IgG is to give the foal a plasma transfusion using um, hyperimmune plasma and that might require um, one two or even three liters um, you know so, or you know multiple transfusions to try and raise that IgG so um, those are the methods available right owner toolkit stay calm most mares will fall without assistance but if things are not going as planned call your vet and get advice and they will be on their way to you and talk to you as they're you know on their en route um, make sure you have a torch while you're waiting for the vet there's not much that can be done sometimes but you know it can be useful to put a bandage on the tail because when you're going in and out of the vulva trying to uh, correct things the the ta tail hairs can be quite irritant and abrasive so um to the mare so just wrap the tail keep things clean have plenty of towels a bucket um have a fleet enema have a solution for the navel and uh so you know that's either dilute iodine or dilute chlorhexidine um, very very dilute both of these um, okay so we've got our foal healthy mares healthy what are we going to do over the next few weeks and months parasite control is so important 
foals can start getting um, infected with parasites right from birth and uh, it's really important that parasite control starts from six weeks old. Vaccinations should usually begin around weaning which is six to seven months of age and passport and microchipping. That is actually a legal requirement for all foals to have a passport and microchip within six months or before the 30th of November in the year which they're born. When you're doing this, you need to think about your chosen breed society and their entry requirements. They might require a DNA sample um, and covering certificates from the, the stallions, the studs. So um, that's very important. Don't forget that part. And that's the end of the talk. Thank you so much for listening. I hope some of it's been useful. And if you um, if you enjoyed it, um, it would be fantastic if you made a donation to the Wiltshire Air Ambulance. Thank you so much.